past lecture in the series on LSI systems design. And I see that most of us have made it through the week. <laughs> Breathing hard, perhaps, but, but here, nevertheless. OK, uh, first, no, I don't need that. First uh, questions on uh, things we talked about yesterday or uh, want to clear up before we get started on uh, today's lecture? OK, uh, there's a bunch of odds and ends topics to cover today. Uh, talk a little bit about the follow-on seminar series, which we're going to be running after the class. Uh, symbols and Icarus, project schedule to give you an idea of some of the things you should keep in mind while trying to figure out uh, how you're going to meet the April 20th deadline. A uh, little bit uh, about a couple more software tools other than Icarus we have that will may make your job of design or checking easier. Uh, and testability, what you might do to make, make it easier to test your chip. Uh, a little bit on scaling, a little more detail on the, the issues of scaling integrated circuits down to smaller dimensions, specifically NMOS, of course, in this case. And uh, circuit simulation, when you really feel it's necessary and you want to get an idea of the true timing performance of your circuit as opposed to whether it functionally work or not, uh, you might want to do some circuit simulation. And we have some capabilities here at PARC for doing that. And, and Bob Spinrad is going to talk some, uh, for a few minutes about the advanced design facility. And all that takes place in the first half of the lecture. <laughs> the second half, Lynn Conway is going to uh, give an overall summary of the course and also relate some of the experiences that she had at MIT while teaching a similar class there. And she'll be contrasting this class and its schedule and, and goals and so forth with the class that, which she taught at MIT to give you some idea of, of how the two contrast. OK, onward. <clears throat> OK, we want to run, uh, keep the momentum of the you know, activity and so forth that, that has been started this week going. And we thought the best way to do that was to schedule a, what we call an advanced LSI design seminar series, where we will try to introduce some of the more uh, advanced uh, topics and, and issues related to LSI design and bring people in uh, from outside as well as using speakers from, from PARC and the other organizations in, in the Palo Alto and San Francisco area. Uh, the speakers, as I've shown here, might come from, from PARC. I want all of you to be participating in this series, specifically talking about the, the chips that you have in mind to design, what uh, particular problems you're running into, uh, what particular neat solutions you have to those particular problems, and so forth. Um, then there will, of course, be the speakers from, from the universities and uh, outside industry as well. We are uh, tentatively planned on trying to schedule the meetings for Wednesday mornings. And uh, I'm sure that can't meet everybody's expectation. And, and it may be at different times from time to time to enable a certain speaker to be here. But uh, I just wanted to throw out that, that time as a, as a, uh, as a tentative uh, scheduling time and see how things work. Don. Did you want to combine? We were trying to make them not conflict. Would you rather have them on the same day? Is that what you're thinking? No, that, no that, I was saying Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning is fine. Okay. Like For those who are coming, for, like yourself, from El Segundo. Well, it's very hard to, to show up here at 9 o'clock from El Segundo. Well, we would not schedule at 9. It would probably be at 10. It's normal starting time for seminars in the morning. 10.30? <laughs> <laughs> How about a luncheon discussion? <laughs> OK, uh, next topic on the list. Uh, in the demonstration that I gave of Icarus, I only gave examples of how you draw items directly on the screen using the mouse. And as most of you have probably discovered, there's another method of putting things on the screen, namely through the, through the, the trick of using symbols. And symbols are merely a, a dump file, if you will, of, of little, little rectangles. You can you can package the, the, a particular cell or anything that you want repeated or, or saved in an in a easily manipulatable uh, unit. You can save it away and give it a name, and then step and repeat it in, in various array sizes, uh, whatever suits the particular purpose. Uh, examples of cells are things like a bit slice of an ALU or a memory bit, or a, one of the cells, for instance, that goes along the side of an array. Uh, and the, the arrays that you put them in can, of course, be either linear or two-dimensional. 
the uh, description of how to use symbols uh, is given in the in the Icarus II document. And if you have problems or questions related to that, why don't you why don't we get together individually? Uh, besides allowing you to step it into or put it down in, in arrays and uh, make it easily manageable. It also saves precious memory space on the Alto. As you're all familiar, the Alto, you never have enough memory space for whatever you want to do on the Alto. And we use symbols as a trick to, uh, to save that space uh, in the Icarus program. We, when you're just drawing single items, all those, those items are, are stored directly in the main memory and can be easily manipulated and changed and modified or deleted. If you uh, then package those rectangles up into a cell or a symbol, uh, then the data associated with them gets stored out on the disk. And any refreshing of the symbol then involves going to the disk. So it takes a little bit longer to refresh things that come from symbols, but it uh, saves on, on memory space. Uh, sort of a side, light of, a side advantage of, of cells and, and the particular properties that they have is they keep your grubby fingers off of them after you've designed it. The, uh, one of the nice things about Icarus is, is that it's easy to change and modify things. The bad half of that is that it's easy to change and modify things which you didn't intend to change or modify. And symbols, because they won't allow you to modify their interior structure without uh, explicitly giving the expand command, uh, sort of protects you to a large extent from uh, too much uh, accidental alteration of the, of the project which you've laid out. And it just, uh, when you move it up a little, it just eases the manipulation of, of large amounts of data because you can treat uh, a, a fairly large amount of data as a single item and, and move it around and so forth uh, as that. Uh, note that symbols can be nested inside each other to any level, and that's often a, a useful trick. And uh, they can be expanded, modified, and renamed either to the same name or a different name. If you expand it, modify it, and give it the same name again as, you, as the original symbol, it will then change all the instances of that symbol wherever they are in your drawing. So if you find a, a universal error in, in, a, in a symbol, you can go back and modify it. It will be changed everywhere in the drawing. Uh, if, you, if you don't want to change it everywhere in the drawing, you want to make a special case of it, for example, at the end of a shift register or, or something like that, you can modify it and give it a different name and then, and then draw that as if it were a new symbol, which in, in fact it is. Probably I, I should warn you now that uh, if you have a symbol stepped in an array and you modify its bounding box, the total area in which it's, in which it's that you define as a symbol, it will uh, keep the, the stepping distance of the array the same. It will not modify it to, to, to fit the new bounding box. And so if you are going to change the, the size of the box of which surrounds the symbol, then you may want to go and redraw the array. Questions on that? Jeff? Yeah. Uh, if you just redefine a macro and, or a symbol and it, it comes up other than you intended, there's some way you can back up to the previous state? No. If you give it the same name, then the old one's gone and, and the new one is the one you got. And you, then you can go back and modify the new one again. But the old one is not saved. For instance, you can reread the thing off the disk. Oh yeah, you can always reread it off the disk if you save. You can save it on save it, uh, a temporary version of the file, do some modifications, and if they didn't come out, you know, do a do a back step to the it's, original it's version. It's not like it redefines the macro on your file. It, no, it no, it, it, it's all all the redefinition and changing is is held within the current state of Icarus, and only when you do a save drawing does it. With the, save it on the disk. When I say it puts it on the disk, it puts it on a temporary file on the disk. There's a file, a uh, special file that it creates called IcarusSymbols.temp, I believe, which holds the current symbols which are active in the in the symbols which are active in the current drawing, and it doesn't modify the the original file. There's no notion of a more universal file like, as in, in the libraries itself. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, libraries are not are not well supported in Icarus, partly because they are not as useful as they are in cell, uh, probably because we didn't think about it enough. But uh, <laughs> it would be it would be better if they were uh, if there were a more universal way of doing that. Uh, projects. Uh, number one, of course, you have to pick your project. This is I'm not going to put put weeks on this necessarily. I'll may, maybe make some some general comments, but uh, you ought to be picking your project very very soon, and. Uh, because there are, there are obviously a lot of 
not very much time and, and a lot of steps to go through in actually implementing your project. Uh, you'll want to do an overall system design, of course, and, and define how the cells which you envision uh, in this system are going to lay out in sort of a floor plan, uh, sort of an out, outline the cells and which ones are going to interconnect with which ones and see which ones have to match up so that you can then decide uh, you know, how, what, the, what the pitch is going to be, find out, decide which is the biggest one and maybe work on that one first and then, and then match the, the others to it. Uh, and then you'll, of course, want to go into stick diagramming or stick diagramming slash logic designing your, your cells. And before you go any farther, like before you sit down with Icarus and, and start the layout, it behooves you to really be careful about, uh, about the designs that you've done and think it through, think it through carefully. Uh, you, can, you can spend a lot of time hacking a cell into uh, sort of its minimum dimensions with Icarus only to discover several hours later that that's not really the cell that you wanted anyway. And, <laughs> and so, for those of you who like to just charge on, uh, <laughs> I, I just give you the warning, uh, just be a little bit more deliberate in, than you might otherwise be in the, in the initial design steps and, and how the thing is going to fit together, and it will, it will really save you in the overall time of the, of the project. Because once you've, you've got a cell all carefully made, and then you fit another one to it, and fit another one to it, and fit another one to it, and then you find you, you have to change that central one. Then you have to go back and change all the ones that interconnect with it because they may change, you know, because they don't fit together anymore. And so uh, it's, it's not too bad if you only have two or three or four cells in your system. But if you're doing a design perhaps on your next go around that has uh, 20 or 30 different cells, uh, it, it really is uh, helpful to have thought it out carefully beforehand. Uh, that's where, that's where some of the squeezing of design rules comes in, is when you've got everything defined and you have to change that central thing, and you think, well, I either, I either squeeze or I really work on this one, or I go back and, and redefine everything that connects to it. So, so do be careful. Think uh, fairly carefully about what, what, what the pad connections are going to be, what kind of signals you're going to need to drive it, and so forth. And, and do the, do the top-level design carefully before you get too far into the detailed uh, layout. Then, of course, uh, You'll, you'll want to do the layout with Icarus. And, and then again, leave, leave a lot of time for, for checking design rules and giving to your neighbor. Because you'll stare at a thing for hours and hours and think, ah, oh, it's perfect. Nothing's wrong. And somebody will walk up and say, what's that? You know? <laughs> it's, it's the nature of the problem. And uh, there's just a tremendous amount of detail to be checked. And, I, and it is extremely helpful to, get, uh, to either be working with somebody or get somebody to, to look at the, at the things that you're doing. Uh, to make sure that, that you haven't talked yourself into uh, the thing working when, in fact, it has no hope at all. <laughs> and, uh, and, and again, before you go about trying to assemble the thing, don't, you, you might want to do it as an experiment just to make sure things are fitting together, but uh, don't try to carefully assemble the thing as you go. You know, do the cells that are, that are isolated and, and see that each individual one's butt up against each other. But don't try, to, don't try to build up your whole drawing as you go. It just makes a big drawing, and it takes longer to refresh, and you have to manipulate the thing, and it changes. And, and, it's, and it's best to go as far at the individual cell, de cell design level, I've found, before you try to put the whole thing together. And then as a final step, you can you know, make all the arrays and fit them together and that sort of thing. I think initially you'll probably feel uncomfortable about you know, doing each of these steps in isolation without going to the next one, and so you'll want to jump ahead and, and just see how it's going to go. But just as a, as a, as a thing to work towards, uh, it's, again, I think I've found personally anyway that it's best to uh, do, your, do your cell, all your cell design before you really put anything on the, on the paper at all or on the actual drawing itself. And then the final step is to lay, lay all the cells out and do the interconnects to the pads and, and so forth. Uh, then again, you know, after you've got the whole thing done and, and everything's perfect, you know, leave a week <laughs> to find out why it isn't perfect, because uh, uh, you'll you'll probably need it. And so, so don't don't plan on assembling and assembling the final thing into uh, into finished form on the night before it's due. Uh, it probably won't work. And then you just send the design to us and cross your fingers and hope for the best. Questions on that before we go on? Okay, I just wanted to 
mention a couple of other things. Uh, what other tools are available to Leo? Uh, can you say about how we would test the chips and we get them back? Yeah. That's, that's the next thing. Uh, that's the next thing after this one, I think. Uh, <coughs> the, this, these are the tools that are available for helping you do the design or helping you do the layout of the system or helping you check it before you actually get the thing fabricated. Uh, number one, there, are, there are, is a small library of predefined symbols, the most useful of which are mentioned here, standard I.O. pads and uh, PLA cells, most of which Dick Lyon did and have been already tested, for example, in the MIT chip and found to be uh, operational. And those are available, those really are on the Icarus directory on Ivy. And uh, they're, they're with, they're the files with the .ic extension and otherwise I think they have a fairly obvious name as far as what they are. Those of you who are visiting that have a disk uh, that we made up for you, those symbols are already on those disks. So. Oh, Dick says they're, doc they're described in the guide to LSI implementation, excuse me, the, uh, the book which I spoke about yesterday. Okay. Uh, could you move that up? Uh, there's another program which I'm going to mention the uh, existence of, and uh, I should mention that we, because of the sort of sporadic nature with which we've been doing LSI design in the past, a lot of these and the, and the small number of people involved, uh, some of these programs are not as well documented or, or debugged or whatever as, as some of the other generally available systems programs which, uh, which you may be acquainted with. And uh, we're certainly, uh, you know, as, as the number of people doing designs and so forth expands, the necessity for the better documentation and support and so forth will become, will become clear. But uh, so I, I advise you to, you know, I want you to be aware of these things, but don't feel that they are as debugged, for instance, as, as the cell system or some of the things which are associated with it. Uh, the program which I'm, which I'm going to describe now is a program called ICL, or Integrated Circuit Layout System, which is a group of BCPL routines which I wrote, which allows you to manipulate things from a BCPL program. And you can create Icarus files, or you can take a, an Icarus file which you've created in, I, in Icarus, for example, which may have a number of cells de defined in it, and use the program to actually describe how they're laid out. And you can put down cells relative to each other. You can, you can read from the file, find out how big a cell is, and put something down relative to it, rather than having to put things down at explicit coordinates, as you do in Icarus. And uh, that, that basic technique although it's, it's a little awkward going back and forth between Icarus and, and a program which is generating a, another file, uh, can be useful under, under numerous circumstances. And I just want to point out that, that its existence. And if you're interested, uh, why don't you come see me? There's also a program uh, which allows you to extract individual symbols from an Icarus file and to do scaling of an Icarus file. If you want to scale an Icarus design by a rational number, this program will, will do that for you. Tips on testing. Uh, I don't have any uh, uh, earth-shaking earth news to tell you about testing. It uh, can be hard, and you should be careful about the design that you do to make sure that there's some hope of finding out what's wrong with it if, in fact, uh, it has 